Now, President Tekufuado on February 21 directed leaders of the two main political parties, the NDC and the NPP, to meet over the disbandment of their militia groups. Now, although there's been what has been described as feet dragging by the party since, the first steps towards the much anticipated meeting takes place today. Renowned man of God, Archbishop Duncan Williams, as part of the delegation from the Peace Council, mediating this meeting. First, let's bring you this news desk report. The time has come to put an end to the phenomenon of politically related violence. I want to use the platform of this message to make a sincere, personal net appeal to the leaders of the two main political parties in our country, MPP and NDC, to come together as soon as possible, preferably next week, to agree on appropriate measures to bring an end to this worrying and unacceptable phenomenon of vigilantism in our body politic. <laughs> was President Ekufuado on February 21, 2019 in Parliament during the State of a Nation Address. This was subsequently followed by exchange of letters between the NDC National Chairman, President Ekufuado, the NPP, and subsequently the National Peace Council over demands, requirements, and expectations. Some were met, others were dismissed. Civil society groups were vociferous in their call for the two leading parties to commit to the process beyond the lip service. We call on the NPP and NDC to demonstrate good faith towards the dialogue by formally dissociating themselves from political vigilantes and recommitting themselves to fight against electoral violence, impunity and injustice. We further call on the two parties to desist from publications of their correspondence with the president and among themselves in the media. This will go a long way in enhancing the environment needed to proceed with the dialogue. After minor disagreements over the need for a mediator and all outstanding issues cleared out, the day is finally here. Sami Jemfi is communications director of the NDC. We will be there and it is our hope that we will achieve some strides in our efforts to end the canker of political vigilantism. National organizer of the MPP, Samye Uku, says the party is committed to the process. It's time for all of us to sit around the table. The parties are poised for today's meeting to agree on the terms of engagement and so is the mediator, the National Peace Council. Most Reverend Professor Emmanuel Asante is chairman. The technical meeting involving committee members from the NDC MPP. They are meeting to discuss terms of reference and terms of engagement. Then we'll be in a position to tell the public the venue and the timing for the mediation. Join us. will be following keenly as part of our campaign to disband party militias now. Now I was at the Central Hotel earlier today where the meeting took place, but in the studio with me, Elton John Broby, who has been there most recently with the latest developments. Elton, how nice to see you. Good. Right, so they've come out with something at the end of it? Yes, four hours, and they have a four paragraph uh, communique uh, that you know, communicates exactly what uh, transpired within the room as far the four, after the four hour meeting. Mm. Right. Uh, any details you can share? Well, so uh, the, the brief of this was that they managed to set the ground rules. Uh, that will inform the basis for their meeting in subsequent meetings. But the bottom line, as far as today's meeting is concerned, they've all committed to you know, disbanding uh, the various vigilante groups, as they want to call it, in their camps. That is the first commitment that all of them have signed on to. So going forward, we are not likely to hear uh, Kandahar boys, uh, Waga Bulldogs, and the likes, because that is the first step towards this. Now, once this is out of the way, they are hoping that uh, next week they will meet again and they will now sit through some of the concerns that the NDC, for example, have raised about ongoing you know, recruitment of certain individuals into the public service. And then, you know, the MPP also have their own concerns. So that's what they'll be doing. Right. Can you brief us quickly on who was there um, for, this, uh, for this meeting? So, Koji, I'm sure you are aware that before this meeting actually started, the Peace Council made it clear that they, they will welcome seven, seven people from each of the political parties. So for the NDC, 
They had the national chair, uh, Samuel Ofosu Ampofo, the general secretary, Johnson S.C. Dunkati, are also representing the, the NDC side, Abraham Amaliba, who is a, a legal practitioner. Uh, Nana Atodagzi, a former chief of Saudi during the uh, Rawlings administration, uh, Kofi Totobi Kwache, uh, Kakra uh, Isamwa, uh, so, uh, and then Prosper Bani, the former chief of South mm -hmm. during the Mahama administration, who later became an ambassador extraordinary. Mm -hmm. So these are the people who represent the NDC uh, at today's meeting. For the MPP, for the Blade National Chair, John Boyd, the General Secretary, Gary Nimakum, which has the, uh, the first vice chair of the party, Samia Uku, uh, Mark Opoku, Yabwabina Samwa as well. So these are the composition of uh, the, the, the various parties. On right. the side of the National Peace Council, because this is happening at the auspices, uh, we had uh, Nana SKB Asante, Zubibi SKB Asante, the Yoman Hene of Ascori Mamponi Asante region, who's also a member of the National Peace Council, uh, Archbishop Duncan Williams of Action Faith Chapel, Nana Ajankuma Dufie George Amo, the Acting uh, Executive Secretary mm -hmm. of the uh, Peace Council, and then the, uh, the, 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 the chairman of the Pentecost Church of Ghana, he was also there. So these are the people who met today mm. and decided on the way front. Mm. Now, the parties after the meeting had, a, had an exclusive interview with the national chair of the MPP, Freddie Blay. Mm. I'm sure that in subsequent bulletins, we'll get to hear from him. Mm. They are committed to this. That's the impression they gave me. I also asked him about the fact that even as they sit at the Plush uh, Hotel and decide the way for as far as dealing with vigilance is concerned, the Attorney General is on, his, is on her way to Parliament to present a bill mm. that will seek to outlaw activities of party vigilantism. And uh, so, I mean, I, I, I sought for him what they make of this particular issue because a law mm. is being promulgated to, you know, back this particular issue. He says that what you are doing is the commitment of the party. So what government is seeking is government-owned uh, issue. When everything is done and dusted, they will, they will seek to marry the two and see how busy we deal with this particular matter. Mm. The commitment from both sides is that they are hoping to deal with this matter before the 2020 election so that we will not have the issue of party, you know, foot soldiers acting as security men uh, to protect the ballot box. But the NDC on the other says that whilst they are in this meeting trying to also disband their own members, what they will want from the Electoral Commission and the security agencies is that they will be fair neutral and impartial in the discharge of their duties, especially in the 2020 generalism. Because that's the only way they will ask their boys to stay behind. But in an event where they feel that the security apparatus is working against their interests, then you know that they may have to call on their people to come out. And wow, then. so it sounds like a conditional sort exactly. of um, and, and, um, and exactly concept. what I've been told that in subsequent meetings, these are the concerns they will seek to address, even as all of them have committed to disbanding the party militias. Mm -hmm. Sounds like a steady start, but of course the real work is still ahead. Meanwhile, chairperson of the NCCE, Josephine Nkrumah, has lauded the two parties for their determination to disband political militia and is urging, urging them to see it through. Uh, she spoke earlier in an interview with my colleague Mamabi Ousu Abwaji of the AM show. It's good news for us that finally the parties are submitting to a certain process. But um, beyond that, we need to wait and know the outcome of the meeting in order to have an informed view on whether we have a process or we are building on a process in hand or we're going to go back to um, many correspondence between the two parties. It is also um, an opportunity for us to test the waters and see whether or not these political parties are acting in good faith because um, in the not too distant past we have had um, conflicting you know, statements from members of any political party, whilst one agrees to the fact that we need to disband, there are others who think that, or who, who endorse mm. the, 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 the groups that they are affiliated to. So in that regard, I think um, it's important for us to listen to them and then determine which way we are going. But also beyond that, it also serves as an opportunity for other stakeholders to begin to make an input into that process. I don't think that if we leave the two parties alone, they can, um, you know, holistically 
go through the process of disbandment. They must necessarily rope in or collaborate with other agencies, mm. civil society organizations, faith-based organizations. Um, um, like I said, other agencies like the Small Arms Commission, mm. for instance, the National Commission for Civic Education, they are mediator currently, the National Peace Council, the Ghana Police Service itself, the judiciary. I think they all have critical roles mm. to play in this process and nobody should be left out. We need to have a cohesive whole in trying to address this problem. I'll tell you what would be interesting. What if we could talk to somebody who was actually in that meeting? Well, guess what? We can. Mensa Thompson is the chairman of the Coalition of Civil Societies Against Political Vigilantism, CCSAPV. Uh, he joins us now. How nice to see you, Mr. Thompson. Yes, thank you, Kojo. So you were there. Yes, I was. Uh, invited by the Peace Council? Actually, this was uh, exclusive to the political parties, but a few of us were allowed to witness from afar and see how the whole deliberations was going to go. The Peace Council have assured us that subsequently, uh, the, um, the mediation process, this is just the beginning of the uh, entire mediation process, and the right. subsequent mediation, mediation processes is going to have full representation of civil societies like right. ourselves to be able to track and monitor the compliance level of the political parties in all these dis discussion of banning the vigilante groups. Right, so today you were observing. Observing. Right, so talk to us about how it all went. Uh, what were the posture of the parties um, involved? Well, I think the parties... Uh, of course, started with you know each other blaming each other for, I mean the the issues of vigilantism. I mean uh, raising issues of past records of you know uh, political party vigilante activities and issues of by election that have come in the past and how both political parties have acted. So I think um, at the beginning, I mean it was usually characterized with a few of these some of the sentiment that were being expressed, but um, I think. As time goes on, the modalities became clear, and it looks like the two main political parties agree and are confident that indeed this political vigilantism is a threat to the security and the democracy that we have as a country. So it is important that they all come together and disband it. And for me, I think that was a highlight of the event that at least for once, the two main political parties came to one, uh, one standpoint or one conclusion. And uh, I think that subsequently, uh, that would characterize their posture in the subsequent mediations. Yeah. I mean, for this thing to work, there's going to have to be a lot of openness, honesty. They're going to have to admit things which might be embarrassing to, 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 to each party. Do you see a willingness on their part to do this? Can we expect honesty from them going forward? Well, yeah, I think the, the NDC as a political party has raised that challenge with the transparency, especially for the fact that the NPP as the party that constitutes governments and they have access to the security agencies. The issue of you know, recruitment of party militia into the security agencies also came up hugely and it's one of the issues that is also I mean, creating some level of mistrust for the oppos opposition party. Uh, I mean, and, and these are things that should be expected. Now I think it is the onus lie on government to exercise that level of transparency, that level of commitment, that level of openness, because you are in power, you, ha you, are, you, have, you are in charge of the security agencies by law, constitutionally, you have access to them and you command them. The president is the commander in chief of the security forces and so I think a, a lot more commitment, a lot more expression of transparency and openness on his part to deal with the issue will, in a, in a very large extent, calm the nerves of the opposition party down will take away a, a lot more mistrust and actually drag the other people along and they can embrace whatever modalities that is going to come out of out of this mediation i think it is very key the posture of government will be very key in all this mediation mm. now uh, government were not particularly keen on having anyone else in this meeting except the two parties uh, the ndc however was calling for broader consultation how is the peace council faring you know as as mediators here have they been accepted by both sides? Uh, have there been challenges? Uh, what has been your observation of, of the Peace Council's efforts so far? Well, I think the two, the two political parties believe that uh, in terms of this matter, the Peace Council have a lot more capacity to be able to deal with the issue. Now, it's also up to the Peace Council to also look at the broader context of the matter and how they believe that they don't restrict this mediation to themselves, but also invite parties with significant knowledge 
in matters of security, in matters of mediation. And I was happy to see the Archbishop of Archbishop Duncan Williams there. I mean, I think some of these revered men of God also will contribute hugely to this process. And so, yeah, and not forgetting civil societies. Um, I've had a few um, discussions with some members of the Peace Council who have admitted that they are going to ensure that subsequent meetings, civil societies, are not left out in this mediation process. And we have made it clear that as a coalition, a number of civil societies have, that have come together to form this coalition, we are going to be tracking and monitoring the progress of this, of this uh, outcome, of the outcome of this vigilantism issue and, and how the political parties are going to comply. And we'll be reporting with the media and other agencies and making sure that indeed we are working towards eliminating this canker out of our system. And so it's important that some of us are also not left out of, out of, uh, out of this whole process. And we, we, we've also raised a number of issues which include calling for the, uh, the, the government or the presidency to make available the short commission reports. I mean, I think in recent times that has been the only uh, case of political vigilantism which have a commission set up to investigate it. Now the report is out. We civil society organizations in our actions, in our activities, in an action plan that we are going to execute before, during and after the 2020 elections, it will be very important that we factor in some of these recommendations, very strong recommendations that have been made by the commission report. And so it is important that government make it, makes it available to, to our civil society organizations so that we can, we can take some of these recommendations and work with in our activities and in our action plan and also supporting the elimination of these vigilante groups. And I think that that is also going to help in a very large extent. Right. Okay. Now, according to the program of activity, uh, after arrivals and prayers, there was a welcome statement by the Peace Council, um, and then there was a statement from Nana S.K. Biasante, who is a, a member of the mediation team. Uh, then a statement from NDC, statement from NPP. Um, then they took a break and then came back to consider terms of engagement. And then they set some timelines, and that was it. So, in terms of the statements from the parties, uh, Anything significant that you took away from what they had to say? Well, I think uh, m most of them were agreed. I mean, the to the to the fact that this vigilante issue was gradually becoming a threat to our democracy. I think that was the mutual thing that was picked out of the two of them. The issues that they they they, they put across and 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 for me, I think the highlight, the highlight of this whole deliberation. Was, was that you could see from the posture of the two main political parties mm -hmm. that indeed um, they, they would rather not have vigilante groups in, 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 the, in, the, in the political setup. That's I mean, th th that is their posture. I mean, it could be deceptive mm -hmm. though, but mm -hmm. I mean, during the meeting, th those are some of the things that is how their posture reflect, right. was reflecting. And That's so it's important that. Uh, how about Archbishop Duncan Williams? Anything significant that you remember from him? Any particular. A message from him that struck you? Well, I couldn't complete that particular meeting, and so the time that I left, the mediation, the mediation was still going on. Very and well. so, but I think that most of the talks were being done by the political parties, whilst right. the Peace Council and the mediation team kept listening and taking notes. Fair All right. Now, um, a communique has been issued at the end of that process. I have that with me now. Um, I'll go through it very quickly. It's not very long. It says the National Peace Council met with key members of the two main political parties in Ghana, namely the NDC and the NPP, in response to a call by the president. Uh, in the State of the Nation address to eradicate political vigilantism. After an open and exhaustive deliberation, the parties agreed that vigilantism is inimical to Ghana's democratic system and must be eradicated. With respect to the immediate focus of the mediation or dialogue, the NDC is of the view that it should be the eradication of political vigilantism in all its ramifications, while the NPP is of the opinion that the focus should be political party vigilantism in all its ramifications. Significantly though, both parties agree to engage in deliberations aimed at one, disbanding vigilante groups uh, operating within political parties or for political purposes, two, prohibiting the ownership, hiring or utilization of such groups by the political parties or members thereof, and three, cooperating with state agencies and stakeholders in the total eradication of such groups or incidents of vigilantism in the country. It should be noted that the two parties are also committed to exploring other processes in relation to the elimination of vigilantism. It is signed by uh, Samuel Ufusu Ampopo, chairman of the NDC, Freddie Blay, chairman of the NPP, and I believe this might be 
the uh, head of the National Peace Council, whose signature is here. Thank you very much to you, Mensa Thompson. Thank you. Um, and of course, meanwhile, Joy News' campaign continues with the hashtag Disband Party Militias Now.